Welcome to my intervention. This is all stuff that I have bought on the used market in the last couple of months. I'm telling you about it for two reasons. Three reasons, let's be fair. People love a shopping haul. I've been shopping, this is what I buy. Secondly, we're coming out of a time when gym stuff has been ridiculously, ridiculously expensive. And I'm here to tell you, baby, bargains are back. And thirdly, some tips that I use to get bargains, because I don't mean to toot my own flute, but pre-lockdown, I'd never spent more than 30 pence per kilogram on a one inch weight. The most I ever spent on an Olympic weight was something like 60 pence per kilogram. Now these bargains are not pre-lockdown bargains, but they are most certainly post-lockdown bargains. Let's have a look at what I bought, why I bought it, and then maybe we'll get into how you can communicate in a way that gets you bargains too. This is probably the first bit of kit that I bought coming out of lockdown. Some dude, when the gym's closed, bought everything he could find, set himself up a gym in his garden under a couple of marquees. The second the gym's open, all of it went and uh, went cheap because it got rusty. I really couldn't care less. All my stuff's either in the garden or going to be lobbed around a field anyway. So I bought it because I wanted to have a go at Nordic Curls. And a very common weakness that I see in people is low back weakness. Lots of people sit in the same position for a long time, you get weak. This is a great way of training that up. Obviously, I would get everyone to do deadlifts, but this is a great entrance point to that. It gives you a feeling like, oh, I know what that feeling of working your low back feels like, and I know that it's not an injury. And from there, deadlifts. This thing is awesome, it cost me, I wanna say, 40 pounds and cleaning the back of my car out because it was so full of rusty scuzz water. These bells actually represent a bunch of different ways that you can get stuff cheap, so let me explain. This 20 kilogram bell was on for 40 pounds, said hi to the seller, would you accept 30 pounds? He said, would you take 35? I said, yes. Lesson being, don't be afraid to ask for a discount for a start, but also don't just use the make offer button because more often than not, you just won't get a reply because someone sees it and they're like, that's not the money that I want, so I'm just not gonna bother. Whereas if you manage to start a conversation and then ask, you are a real person to that person and they are more likely to say yes. In the same tract, don't forget that they are a real person, so be polite and if you can afford to meet them where they want to be met, don't take the piss. These two I bought with another kettlebell. This 24, this 28, and a 32, it was 180 pounds. That is a lot of money, yes. But I sold the 32 on, and I sold the 32 on for also a good price, but not as good a price as I got for these, but a price that the person who bought it was happy to pay. I actually paid 65 pounds for these two, which works out at one pound 25 per kilogram, which is a ridiculous bargain considering everything. Another great thing that happened was that what I actually bought was a 20 and a 24, and what actually turned up was a 24 and a 28. So, they made a mistake but weren't particularly bothered. This last one I got from the same person I bought these off and that's another way that you can get stuff at a good price. Be polite, be personable and keep your relationships. So by not taking the piss you can keep a relationship with somebody who might also be selling something later that you want and I wanted it because I wanted it the first time when they sent me the wrong thing. I actually paid two pounds per kilogram for this which is you know, that's a good price. That's sort of like what you'd probably consider the standard price for kettlebells and Olympic plates. But stuff isn't generally that cheap still. I was happy because I saved so much money on these ones. Happy to pay the two pounds per kilogram. I needed it for the games. That's why I bought it in the first place, but it didn't turn up. Just got more kettlebells, you know. What are you gonna do? 
Oh no, too many kettlebells. This is the Tenturi F715i. It's awesome, and if you wanna know why, I did a whole video on it. This thing cost me 50 pounds. It probably seems like a lot for just like a used exercise bike. But what it actually is, is an incredibly high quality assault bike. Before assault bikes were a thing. It was on eBay, I don't remember how much it was on for, but I sent the dude a message asking for details about it. Like, is it stable? Does it make a lot of noise? Does it sprint, that sort of thing. He said, hey dude, do you want to just come and see it? And I was like, yes, please. And then when I was there, I said, uh, how about 50 pounds cash? Dude was happy because he didn't have to go through eBay. Yeah, I bought this because lockdown, the, there's only so many times you can go up and down the stairs. I needed a way of being able to do cardio in the house and this has definitely paid for itself in the amount of biscuits it's allowed me to eat. <laughs> this thing is terrific because it requires almost no learning curve to be able to kick your butt in seconds. Definitely one of the best things I have purchased. My favorite cardio machine and it's staying. It ain't going nowhere. Sometimes I buy these things to move on. This is staying. This is a set of Fit Beast resistance bands. It's all in pounds, but five to 15, 15 to 35, 30 to 60, 40 to 80, 50 to 125. Uh, they're not in here. <laughs> I train a bunch of guys. We all use bands at the same time for warming up. So more bands is always the right amount of bands. Anyway, someone sent me a link to Amazon Warehouse, which I hadn't seen before. It's basically slightly used returned goods that sometimes there's nothing wrong with and they're cheaper. So this whole set cost me like, I would say nine quid which is cheaper than I could buy them on AliExpress, which you know I am a big fan of. Took a punt, thought it was any good, and it was any good. I'm including this because it's not exactly new. You know, I bought those bags also at the same time I bought this stuff, but uh, those bags were new, so there's no trick to it. It doesn't count. Also, if I segregate it that way in my mind, I've spent less money. And even though this is an intervention of sorts, uh, I, I, it's enough. It's enough. This is a 12 kilogram Jordan dumbbell. I bought it from Facebook Marketplace. I paid 10 pounds for it. Now, how? It's a single dumbbell. Basically, you will often find bargains if you're willing to get one when it should be a pair. I'm gonna be doing this forever. I'm probably gonna come across another 12. And if not, this is still heavy and less than a pound per kilogram. 83 pence per kilogram, something like that. My maths is not good and that was off the dome. So if that's even close, go me. I, at some point, when I have a whole set, I thought, why not start, man? Start today. If you got dreams, start today. And this lot, I did not buy together. I bought the barbell, these 25, oh no, 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 this is three purchases. Let me separate into purchases. So this barbell, these two 10 kilogram plates, these two five kilogram plates, and these two two and a half kilogram plates cost me 55 pounds. This cost me a pound a kilogram, and there's a freaking 265 pound Olympic barbell included in this deal. How did that happen? Well, for a start, the bearing was bust on this. I replaced it, it cost three pounds. So there's your next way of getting things cheap off the used markets. Find something that's not in great condition, use your brain and fix it, or find something that's not in great condition and just deal with it. It's still heavy, who cares? I mean, for years and years and years, I've been training with mostly one inch weights because they are so much cheaper. However, in the past year, we've been getting a bit strong for them. And now I have like eight one inch barbells that are just, really bent, <laughs> like bent, proper bent, almost, almost unusably bent. And then these came with it. People didn't want to buy the barbell because of the uh, bearing. So pretty much got them free and they are not cheap plates. Polyurethane coated steel plates, which is about as bougie as a plate gets without it being a bumper plate. So yeah, dig it. Not in the greatest of condition, but I don't know how much of that is me chucking them around and how much of it was on there when I got them. Super happy with that. That's probably the bargain of the century. That's my best bargain of the bunch. Try and find a barbell that doesn't suck, that's less than a hundred pounds right now. It's pretty difficult. Trust me, I've been looking, I'm still looking. What else did I get? 
These two 10 kilogram bumpers were two pounds a kilogram, which is sort of the standard for Olympic plates. Bumper plates usually cost more than that. So I'm still counting this as a bargain. Moreover, I really wanted them. It wasn't just a opportunistic thing. Often I buy things that I don't really want because they're a great price and I will want them and I will use them. I just don't really care about them right now. But right now, all that's going through my mind is bumper plates, bumper plates, bumper plates, bumper plates. Why? Because they're gorgeous and when you drop a heavy weight, they bounce. And that is just about the manliest thing in existence, I think. I wanted a set of 10s because I had previously bought this set of 15s from Again Faster and this set of 25s from Hammer Strength. I think it was 180 pounds. That is two pounds 25 per kilogram. That's too much. I mean, that's not too much. That's still a bargain price. That's too much for me because I am a tightwad. However, I desperately needed some weights quick and I thought if I'm buying them, they might as well be bumpers. They might as well be bumpers. Two pounds 25, 180 quid. They were up for 220 quid. I tried to haggle a chap down to 150. He haggled me back up to 180, but he did throw in some lockjaw collars. So rules for buying things cheap. Make a personal connection first before you make your offer. Go in educated. I've seen a bunch of people selling stuff at still lockdown prices when you can actually get the thing new for cheaper than that. And yes, you might have to pay delivery, but if you know that a thing costs cheaper than they're selling it new, you can say that and probably that will haggle that price down because they're not gonna think, oh, but you'd have to buy shipping, or at least that's a possibility. Be polite, be personable. I mean, don't give everyone your life story, but if you give some details, you become more of a person to that person that you're buying from. You wanna do things for your friends, your friends are your friends because you know them. Look for things that aren't in the best condition. Paint doesn't, doesn't make a difference to the weight. So if you can get something a lot cheaper because it's slightly rusty, can you clean it? If you can get something cheaper because it's got paint chips, if you're bothered, can you paint it? Be a bit handy. Lots of people can't be asked. If you want a bargain, you gotta be asked. Be prepared, say you want an assault bike. I have an assault bike that does everything that all the modern assault bikes do, except for the fact that it's 30 years old, but it's still in great condition. It still kicks my ass the same way a brand new one would, except, you know, it's 650 quid cheaper than a new one is. If you buy something that is old, it's not the coolest thing, that's fine, because other people aren't gonna be looking for it, but it's still gonna work for you. Find out what it actually is you want and then see what else does that thing. Don't sacrifice quality or you'll probably end up buying it twice. Look for stuff that's badly spelled. I have got so many bargains because the thing was spelt wrong. And if you're looking for a trap bar, don't forget to look for a hex bar. Don't forget to look for a shrug bar. You know, look up the synonyms of the thing that you're trying to buy. And then from Amazon Marketplace, those five bands, that resistant band set, that's usually like 50, 60 quid, nine quid. So if you want something like that, if you're looking for an ab roller or a, you know, something small and plastic and Amazonable, check Amazon Marketplace. They might even do bigger things, I have no idea. What I'm saying is there are a bunch of ways that you can get what you want and save money. All of that came to £484.82. Yikes, I gotta slow my roll. This is a whole gym. This is an excessive gym. You might also want a rack and a bench, but the amount of decent quality benches that I've seen recently that I've decided not to buy because I don't really need. I mean, there's one on Facebook right now, it's 30 quid and it holds 300 kilograms. That's enough for you for quite some time. I don't know what you bench, I'm sorry. You might be benching big numbers. That's enough for most people for quite a long time. And then squat stands, 
there is a plethora of squat stands on the market because when all the racks went, everyone bought squat stands. And now those people who bought squat stands have either decided they're staying in their home gym and they're buying racks now that they're available, or they've gone back to the actual gym. So you can get squat stands super cheap. I'm saying like 30 quid. All this was 485 quid plus 60 quid. You've got an excessive gym. There's not really a lot that you can't do with all this. You don't need the uh, glute ham raise. I barely need it, but I wanted it and I bought it. I definitely spent a whole buttload of money recently, but I thought I'd share with you and really come to realize how much money I've spent and try and put it in my head that I can stop spending money now. These are bargains, those are bargains, but now this is the standard bargain. So I can, I, I'm only gonna spend money on extreme bargains. Extreme. Well, I hope this was interesting and maybe even useful for you. If you have got bargains, tell me about those bargains because boy do I love bargains. But whatever you do, whatever you do, friends, make sure that you're getting them gains and be well.